Okay, then let's go ahead and begin. Uh, let me make some opening remarks, then we'll get into the prayer and, uh, uh, and for today's study. Um, well, like many of you have said, uh, I would like to wish you, like we say now, better New Year. <laughs> I'm uh, fairly reluctant to say Happy New Year because sometimes the happiness quotient can be uh, a little dicey. But nevertheless, uh, we hope that this, new, this year will be better than the previous one and all, that, uh, all the years that have gone by. So, uh, so better New Year and a Happy New Year in Christ. I think it's only in Christ we can really have. Uh, the true happiness that will last forever. Well, here we are back on the deck again. Uh, and so lovely to see you all. Hope uh, the weeks gone by have been uh, kind to you. Uh, I hear there are various uh, challenges with regards to weather. Uh, I got a message from a former member in Chennai hearing that there was almost 15 hours of uh, of very heavy rain and uh, some houses have been inundated. So uh, just hoping they are all okay. There is a uh, an alert for North India with very uh, cold weather. Uh, I'm presuming that the East Coast of the US is okay. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> right. Well, here we are beginning with uh, our first Bible study. And uh, let me just take a few moments to discuss what we would like to do, accomplish this coming year. Basically, what kind of a format shall we follow? And uh, maybe you might have some suggestions. So I'd like to, uh, you know, uh, request you to share some of your thoughts. I felt we must take a kind of a multi-pronged approach to our uh, time that we spend on a weekly basis. Uh, one thing we want to make, uh, we want to, uh, uh, you know, accomplish, and that is we are going to have a weekly study, all right? It's, uh, uh, I think that's, we, we keep the momentum, and hopefully many of you can join. So it's going to be weekly. Uh, uh, when I say a multi-pronged approach, yes, Anil, you had a thought? Why? I, hasn't it always been weekly? Yes, yes, it's always been weekly. Uh, we started somewhere in the middle of last year, I think. Isn't that right, Praveen? Uh, uh, and, and then we had it weekly because, you know, we were all locked up at home. Even we are we are not sure whether we can venture out now and hopefully we can start services, but we will maintain a weekly Bible study online, right? We are not planning to have uh, physical meetings, but so online we will have the Bible study. Now, we will continue with the We Believe series uh, because we want to complete that. So that will be one of the uh, items on the agenda. We will continue to study the We Believe series. Uh, so, and hopefully this year we'll continue it. We've already, I think we are mo more than halfway through. So we can uh, carry on and finish that. So that will be one. Also, from time to time, I'd like to take up some standalone studies uh, on maybe social issues. Uh, we want to discuss certain current situations that we face. Uh, debates that are taking place, for example, let's say uh, I heard uh, someone saying that the Bible uh, condones and uh, actually encourages slavery. Is that correct? <laughs> right. So there are people who use the Bible and can, and you know, justify slavery. And so maybe things like that. And, and another one is unity in diversity uh, is there uh, you know uh, is, is that really true uh, can we be diverse and united is there a difference between diversity in unity and unity in diversity because that's a debate that's going on here in india 
so, so maybe we will take up some social issues and discuss those from a biblical perspective. Now, we do want to stay away from political issues and uh, uh, anything to do with other religions. We prefer not to get into those. We will, this is a Bible study, so we will look at it from mostly a biblical perspective. Uh, we we do, uh, we are on social media. All our uh, you know meetings are now being posted on YouTube, and you can always access them. And uh, I think you already know that you know YouTube and other media's cause a fair bit of controversy. People are listening to some of these, and then you know can cause uh, unnecessary problems. So we want to be very careful. And maybe I would like to mention to all of you, be alert if there are any comments or any statements that are made that may uh, cause problems. I think please alert us so we may delete that or sometimes uh, not put up something, you know, post something on social media so that uh, we don't unnecessarily, you know, invite uh, controversy and uh, conflict. Now, this year, I am going to also request our speaking team to come on board. And so uh, this is going to be on the job training. So I want, to, I want to train our young leaders to also come and do Bible studies. So they must take the opportunity to, you know, to study a subject and uh, present it in a way that uh, can be very helpful for all of us. So from time to time, I will ask our speaking team, members of our speaking team to come and do the Bible study, right? Now, you might have some suggestions uh, with regards to subjects. Uh, are there any particular subject you want, to be you want us to cover? Uh, is there something that uh, will be helpful for everyone, you know, to be, uh, to be listening to? So, uh, these are some thoughts I, I want to leave you with as we now proceed uh, regularly to do these Bible studies. Let me invite any thoughts that you might have before we actually move into what we'd like to discuss today. Okay. All right. Any thoughts? It's good that Bertie is joining us and we also have Linda. Uh, Maybe she's doing uh, two things at one time, working as well as listening to the Bible study. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that all of you can hear us. If there are any problems, make sure that you are alerting us so that uh, we can correct the situation here. Okay, from time to time, what we'll do is we will review and we will uh, we can add, include, or we can delete certain things or the way we might do certain things. I am presuming that I think I, I really like the fact that we can do a kind of a short study and then have a q and I hope you are appreciating that. Is that okay? Right. Uh, some of you, of course, have some very good comments to make. And of course, I always invite uh, either Praveen or, uh, you know, Nelson, uh, Franklin uh, to come and uh, you know, uh, supplement with what I have said, and it's always very, very helpful to bring in a fuller picture. Okay, having said that, uh, let's move into uh, opening prayer, and then I will discuss with you what I want to cover today. This is one, today's subject is going to be a standalone. I thought, you know, we will discuss something very current. Uh, I will mention that as soon as we finish the prayer. So. As usual, let's ask Praveen to lead us in the opening prayer. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful to you, Lord, for uh, giving us another opportunity to join together to study your word, Lord. Especially this moment, we want to thank you. Uh, by your grace alone, Lord, we could continue the Bible study from March till now. And uh, we are hoping uh, we would be able to do even better in the year 2021, oh Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray that your grace may be granted to us and you strengthen our spirit that none of us may lose our interest, but uh, continuously bring you bringing some interesting thoughts into the study and discussion 
uh, which edify one another, uh, 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 the body of Christ together, O oh Lord. And uh, leaders and guiders, and uh, we want to uh, request you that you speak to us as we study and meditate on your word and reveal yourself to us, especially in us, O oh Lord, and uh, speak through your servant. And uh, we want to uh, hear you and experience you more intimately as never before, Lord. This one hour that we spend in your presence, Lord, may be a time of blessing unto all of us. It may be a time of uh, encouragement and a time uh, of exhortation in our lives, Lord. And lead us and guide us. And uh, uh, for today also, we pray that uh, we submit our time to your, to your throne of grace, asking for your mercies, uh, believing that you speak to us, O Lord. And lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, obviously, the, the most uh, current issue that we are all facing is the pandemic, which uh, unfortunately we thought would end by now, but uh, seems to continue, not only continue, but also uh, you know, increase in its intensity because of the cold weather. And what I am most surprised by is the fact that the vaccine that has come out, the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, has caused a lot of controversy. And the controversy is among Christians. This is what surprises me, you know, quite a bit, that Christians, uh, have certain opinions which, uh, uh, you know, have a big question mark on them. And uh, I was watching a, uh, an interview uh, by two doctors who are Christians, who are believers, and they were specifically asked to provide answers to the many questions that Christians have raised with regards to the vaccine. This uh, interview was done by an organization called Focus on the Family. I am presuming that some of you or most of you would have heard of this particular organization, US based. And uh, I, when I watched that interview, I felt that they had a fairly balanced approach to discussing this particular uh, you know, uh, subject. The, I've also heard other videos or seen other videos which discusses this particular uh, you know, issue. And I am absolutely appalled with what uh, you know, people have been saying. I mean, the conspiracy theories are so many that it is uh, uh, just amazing how the mind can imagine uh, these kinds of you know, so, uh, scenarios. And the rumors are rife. And what is happening is a lot of Christians are getting confused. They're asking the question, is it uh, right for us to take the vaccine? Some Christians have actually uh, decided not to take the vaccine because of some of these rumors that are flying around. There are questions about the ethical, ethicality. I mean, is it ethical? Are, uh, are they, you know, something to do with morality? Uh, is it violating our ethical codes or our moral, you know, standing when we take this vaccine because of some of these, uh, uh, you know, me the, what do you say, points that have been mentioned. So what I thought of doing today is I want to uh, give you some of the information that I have gleaned from some of these videos. And then I want to take, a, you know, a biblical perspective to it, and uh, then we will stop for some discussion. Now, even as I begin this, I want to make some disclaimers. Uh, number one, I am not a doctor, <laughs> neither am I a scientist or uh, any expert in epidemics, right? The information that I've gathered are from experts. So I am not the expert, but the information I have is from those who are qualified, right? And I urge you to, if you should have any doubts about anything that I say, please have it checked out and let me also know because 
since I don't belong to that particular fraternity. Now, I may be competent to comment on scripture and scriptural perspectives because that is where my expertise is. All right. Now, uh, having laid out the, that, that disclaimer, I just wanted to mention the names of those who I will be uh, quoting extensively from. And uh, one is Dr. Daniel Hinton. He is uh, uh, he's an expert in, in, in epidemics as well as you know, a qualified doctor. And also Dr. Scott James. These are the two who were interviewed on this particular video. And uh, some of the information they have might be quite helpful. The reason they do this video is so that especially Christians, but all of us may have enough information to make an educated decision, right? Our decision should not be based on uh, some kind of emotion or worse still on rumors. That's, that's what is, uh, uh, will, will not be right. Now, Talking about rumors, uh, I think you've probably heard some of these, but one rumor that has been going around and have been, I mean, videos have been circulated even by our own members. And this is where I, <laughs> I feel a need for us to discuss this, uh, is the fact that there is a conspiracy uh, by an individual that you know very well, and that is Mr. Bill Gates. <laughs> the fact that he is hand in glove in preparing a vaccine, and apparently there will be some chip implants into your body with which they can monitor you round the clock, right? Uh, so this is one of those things, and apparently, this chip is actually the prophesied 666 of the book of Revelation. Can you imagine Christians are told that not to take the vaccine because they are going to be implanted by this chip and you are then going to bear the mark of 666. Uh, that is one rumor that was going around. Another one is from a doctor uh, supposedly a doctor, but uh, there has there a question mark there. Uh, and uh, this particular, that when they inject a vaccine uh, into your body, apparently they are actually, will also inject nanocrystals. Uh, nanocrystals that are actually robots that will upload data onto the cloud from your body, right? This is how, and you, did you know what is the name of that, uh, of those, uh, of that particular uh, procedure? It's called Lucifer Ace. <laughs> this is actually being uh, propounded by a particular doctor and it is from the US. I don't know, the US seems to have a, a whole lot of these people. Um, so, they are saying that these are biosensors and they will monitor everything about you, your body, your emotions, uh, your metabolism, uh, you know, uh, everything that you do. So, uh, and interestingly enough, thankfully, there were others who came out and said, many of this is absolute misinformation and actually outright lies. Uh, uh, and some, of course, have said that the flu, uh, the uh, COVID vaccine is nothing more than just a common cold, a common cold that has killed, I don't know how many now, uh, close to half a million, I presume, uh, all over the world. So I just wanted to mention this. And one of the questions that was asked uh, to these doctors was, does science or medical practice go against our Christian faith. This is another big debate that keeps, you know, making its rounds again and again. Uh, there are Christians who are told that science is against the Christian faith. 
uh, and many of them are told not to believe in any kind of scientific information that is uh, given. We will discuss that a little later, but uh, that was one of the points that were discussed also. Uh, the, uh, one of the questions asked was, how does the vaccine work? Because people are so afraid and so uh, confused as to how the vaccine works. And the doctors mentioned that it is basically injected. So it creates antibodies in your a system, which will cause a resistance to these, uh, the, the, the virus. And apparently, uh, I think like you have already heard, some of them are 95% effective. In other words, uh, they are fairly effective in terms of uh, being able to do its job, uh, give you some sense of uh, you know, immunity against these uh, viruses. There was another question that was asked uh, concerning uh, the speed at which this vaccine has been rolled out. Some people are very concerned that this vaccine was rolled out so quickly that could it be ineffective or could it cause harm? Uh, and the doctors explained that the speed at which it has come is basically because of the urgency. Uh, you know, with people dying, obviously they had to put it on, on uh, high gear. And, uh, but having done that, uh, many of or other especially the very well-known vaccines have followed scientific standards. They have not taken any shortcuts, according to uh, the doctors who were interviewed. Um, now, another interesting information that they passed on was that this vaccine was actually being studied and under preparation for years. Uh, they have mentioned that the what they call is the mRNA vaccine has been, you know, in the pipeline for many years. And so they had a head start, even as we were facing the pandemic, they already had a head start in being able to roll out the vaccine quicker. Uh, one of the concerns that was expressed is that apparently when you inject the vaccine, it changes your DNA, all right? Uh, the DNA is the basic, uh, you know, structure in your body, the cell structure, I think it is. Uh, I think Shruti will, be, will have lots to say about that, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, once again, the doctors mentioned, this is not a concern, there is no, uh, you know, there is absolutely no cause for concern that it might actually alter your DNA. So in, as far as that is concerned, there is, uh, you know, it is safe. One big question, and this now begins to slowly enter into the Christian perspective, uh, the ethical and the moral, and that is, uh, some people feel that the cells that they used for the experiments were taken from aborted fetuses. Okay, uh, apparently aborted fetus tissue was taken and the cells were then used for the experimentation uh, for, and the vaccine prepared. Now, the doctors did confirm that some initial, uh, what do you say, uh, vaccines that were prepared many, many years back uh, may have been taken out of human cells. Now, they did not speci specifically mention, you know, aborted fetuses, but human cells were taken so that they could conduct the experimentation. But this has not been a general practice. In other words, uh, they have not, they have no confirmation that aborted fetal tissue has been used regularly, right? So if there is an ethical concern there, now for us as Christians, uh, you know, there is a debate whether abortion is murder or not, right? Uh, is, when does life begin? So that has been a huge controversy that has been raging. And so there are many Christians who believe that uh, if you take 
vaccines, which is, uh, you know, the experimentation has been done on aborted fetal tissue, uh, then they are, they have a moral issue there and they don't want to participate in that. So they would like to decline taking those vaccines. Uh, the doctors did explain that uh, whenever they try to do these experiment experiments, it is done through chemical procedures. Uh, and of course they are tested in human cells, but there is no ongoing uh, sort of practice to use fetal tissue. There is no ongoing uh, practice to use aborted fetal tissues. Okay, so uh, that is one thing that was mentioned. I can see Surya Murthy who's just joined us. Thank you for joining us. We are discussing the COVID-19 uh, vaccine and the questions that have arisen uh, because of that. Okay. Um, all right, so that, uh, that was one huge question that was asked whether the vaccine was made from aborted fetal tissue, and that would have been uh, a major problem for some Christians because uh, some of them believe that, uh, you know, abortion is murder, and so they would not participate in uh, taking vaccines made out of that. Uh, another question that was asked is about side effects. Uh, does the vaccine, if you take the vaccine, does it cause uh, side effects? And here, once again, there have been a fair amount of rumors. Apparently, there was one doctor from England who uh, mentioned that the vaccine will actually cause tremendous harm for children. Uh, he he uh, painted a very dark scenario with regards to the vaccine being administered to children. But uh, re research has found out that uh, the uh, what the doctor said was actually fabricated and he has actually lost his license to practice because of, uh, <laughs> of the uh, rumors that he has been passing on. But the doctors in the interview did mention that there, any medical procedure, any medical procedure will have some side effects and uh, the side effects could be something like either a fever or fatigue or headaches, uh, a sore arm if you have taken it on your arm. Uh, but these are normal, apparently, according to them, these are normal side effects for any kind of medical procedure that uh, is administered to us as human beings. Now, they could also have side effects with regards to allergies. Uh, sometimes uh, some of the vaccines might have components, you know, uh, that may have da dairy in it, like, for example, eggs or egg yolk or something like that. If you have an allergy or an intolerance to that, there may be some further side effects. So that is how the doctors explain. All right, so these were some of the questions that were asked and they went on to uh, assure that the vaccines, especially uh, what are being rolled out now, uh, are safe and uh, they have followed the right kind of procedures. Uh, there are no shortcuts and uh, they have not found any, any particular danger. Obviously, there is a 95% you know, effective rate to it. They can always be the small percentage that might have adverse reactions, but uh, basically they are safe. Now, can we come to the biblical perspective. Right? Um, and, uh, and the question once again is, uh, science, med medicine, medical doctors, uh, uh, you know, medical research, are they odds, at odds with our Christian faith, right? Uh, what is our position with regards to medical science and uh, our Christian faith? Now, we do know that, uh, you know, pandemics have occurred in the past 
and maybe there will be a, a surge of it in the end times. Uh, biblical prophecy seem to confirm there might be, you know, pandemics, uh, you know, at a at a more severe level at the in the end times, so-called end times, even though we have entered the end times long ago. Uh, even the apostles talked about the end times in their time. So you can imagine the end times have been going on for quite some time. Uh, from a biblical perspective, uh, there is no specific mention in the Bible that it is wrong to, you know, seek medical help. It is wrong to seek, uh, you know, uh, medical advice. There are absolutely no mention of vaccines in the Bible. Uh, there are no mention of uh, any kind of, uh, you know, medical procedures as such. There is neither, there is no discouragement to it. Uh, neither is there necessarily any encouragement, even though we can find one or two verses that might be, you know, in favor of taking medication. Uh, one of the gospels is written by a physician. <laughs> I don't know. I think Surya Murthy might find uh, uh, <laughs> a problem with that, but uh, um, but we can Dr. discuss it another time. Dr. Luke. <laughs> Dr. Luke, yes. Yes, I'm glad you agree with me. <laughs> um, from a biblical perspective, we know that planning uh, is encouraged. So when you plan, to protect yourself, to, to do everything, to be safe, uh, to do diagnostics uh, procedures so that you know how you, your body is doing. Uh, there is, you know, the Bible actually encourages a sense of planning to be ready, not to be taken off guard, right? Uh, Jesus Christ uh, on uh, one occasion mentioned that if a person has to build, he has to plan the building, isn't it? Uh, he, uh, I think it is in the book of Matthew, where he talks about uh, starting the building and then not having enough resources to complete. So there is an encouragement towards planning. And when, it, when we talk about uh, planning for our health, uh, doing everything that is necessary to protect ourselves, uh, there is, you know, definitely uh, an encouragement there. Uh, inter one interesting mention by the doctors was how God has blessed us with what they call as a common grace. There is something called common grace and there is something called specific grace. Specific grace is the grace of Jesus Christ to all of us so that we are forgiven, redeemed, and of course, uh, provided eternal life. But when they talk about common grace, uh, I think what they mean is God's gift to mankind with regards to uh, having the ability to reason, to research, to find understanding and knowledge, uh, and doctors and scientists, uh, engineers, all of them do that. Uh, they look at facts, they look at evidence, they do experimentation, they gather data, make certain conclusions out of it. There is absolutely nothing in the Bibles that says that is wrong. Now, uh, the problem comes a little later, which I will come uh, to in uh, just a moment. So common grace is something that God gives all of mankind with. We're all given a reason. We're all given the ability to think, make decisions. Uh, collect information, right? Make educated choices and decisions. And so I'm presuming that God would expect for us to be uh, very much on, uh, you know, on the ball, uh, uh, you know, if I can say that, in terms of finding information and getting information so that we can make good choices. I mean, look at our financial uh, situation. Don't we all plan financially? We need to. Uh, we can't be foolish in terms of our financial perspectives, you know, investments and what kind of investments. And so all of these things are part of the common grace that God has blessed us with. So 
the doctors concluded by saying this, and that is taking or not taking the vaccine is, a not, is not a test of your Christian faith. Uh, the fact that you might take the vaccine or not take it doesn't make you a better Christian or a worse Christian. So it's a, it's a choice that we have to, to make. Right, just as wearing a mask, uh, which you know caused such a ruckus in some countries, uh, but that's a choice that we make. But they did mention one thing: that we as Christians are definitely enjoined, we are commanded to love our neighbor as ourselves. In other words, we have a responsibility to protect others. Uh, you know, so we have to be very much uh, recognizing of the fact that we have a responsibility in making sure that you know we quarantine ourselves if we know we have a communicable communicable, uh, communicable illness uh, and with this pandemic going on a simple you know wearing of mask whether you whether you know it or not in terms of whether you have a are you asymptomatic or not it's loving your neighbor as yourself so uh, I thought that was something that we need to take and all Christians need to take seriously with regards to how we look at this vaccine uh, issue. Let me end by one, one more thought here. Um, and that is this, uh, what do you call it, this debate with regards to science and religion or science and theology. Are they at odds? Some people and some atheists and some very leading atheist scientists say just because they can explain many things, just because they can explain how the universe works or how the solar system works, they then conclude, oh, we don't need God. You know, in the past, we could not explain how these things work. So we only resort to the fact by saying, oh, it is God who does that, right? Uh, some of you may have heard of John Lennox. Uh, he is uh, a scientist and he's a Christian. And he says, when you resort to such, a, uh, such an argument, you are actually trying to say that we believe in God of the gaps. You know, in other words, if you can't explain something, oh, God did it. So this is the God of the gap. But if you can explain something, you don't need God. That's how the atheist reason right on the other hand uh john lennox says that the more you can explain the more you can understand the universe the more awe you have of the creator uh, the more you can begin to appreciate the genius behind the human body or, or the solar system or the milky way or the universe and how it all works together with such precision. And so he says, the information that we gather from scientific research should actually increase our faith. You're frozen. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you're back. Am I on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have an unstable connection. So let me continue. I hope you can all hear me. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm reading from Psalm 19, and it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Uh, and then you can carry on. If you remember, that was a hymn that we used to sing, uh, declaring the glory of God. And so this, this chapter is, you know, just so fascinating. It says that 
the universe provides us with knowledge. As we look into the universe, it is actually pouring forth understanding and knowledge. And that knowledge, that's basically scientific data, right? Uh, and with that scientific data, we can conclude many things. And one of the things we conclude is that there is a creator behind such intelligent creation, right? The entire universe is, bears witness to God's majesty and to his power, right? Uh, so the, and the, uh, there is another very interesting thing. And that is the universe is intelligible. In other words, it can be understood. We have a mind that can understand how the universe works. That itself shows that there was, there is intelligence behind our intelligence, right? Uh, so uh, this basically attests to the fact that we are blessed with a intelligent mind to be able to collect data uh, and use our reason to make conclusions and then also to make predictions. And so uh, we look into the uh, we look into the you know universe and we know that is constantly giving off information with which we have been able to use and make conclusions. And so science and theology is not against each other. In fact, it reinforces one another. Theology helps gives us an understanding that we can actually do science. And when we do science, our theological, uh, what do you say, understanding only increases. So this is uh, as much I'd like to share with you today. Uh, I wanted to discuss a, a relevant issue today. And uh, uh, let me now open it up for any questions that you might have. Obviously, remember my disclaimers. I cannot give you any, any advice on medicine or uh, uh, the vaccine as such. But if you have any biblical perspective to it, uh, feel free, we can discuss at this time. Is there a... <clears throat> Like in the U.S., of course, as you mentioned, there are a lot of these, uh, you know, quacks or kooks going around mentioning all kinds of things. Is there something like that going on in India, too? Because I read somewhere that people are objecting to the vaccine, saying this is a BJP vaccine. We won't have it and so on and so forth. Um, I think there are. Uh, uh, do any of you, Praveen, you, do you know of any... Uh, Rumors flying around here in India? There are most of them are actually passed on to us from US. <laughs> That's spreading around. I, I want to add something here. Um, yes, go the, ahead, Paul. In the political in the political field, of course, there's been some opposition, uh, you know, parties saying we will not have because the the government, which is BJP currently. So uh, what was the uh, good point about it? Now, since we are discussing about our faith, um, OYC, who is uh, the political um, in uh, Hyderabad, um, he gives credit to the uh, scientist and says, um, yes, why not? I mean, world over, it's acknowledged. So we will go ahead and uh, take the vaccine. So I think that's a good way of, uh, you know, seeing things. So I'm surprised uh, that, you know, um, today we had this topic and Christians are opposing. So that's what it is. Political, I did hear. But yeah. uh, spiritual, uh, so far, nothing in India, you know. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, it, yeah. <clears throat> uh, in terms of uh, a religious uh, sort of reaction to it has not been very widespread. Uh, there are no religious perspectives to it. And I'm presuming that many of, uh, you know, most of us uh, Indians here are okay with it. Uh, like I think Praveen said, uh, quite a bit of it comes from mostly the US, uh, these kinds of cons 
uh, this uh, conspiracy theories are coming from there. Right. Franklin, you have a thought uh, no, sir, with nothing, regards sir. to science and theology? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I, you, just, I know. Uh, you. Yes, beginning, sir. I, I love that subject. I'm just starting now studying. But thank yes. you very much, sir, yeah. for taking up Actually, a relevant... I you... Sir, I like the relevant subject that you have picked up. Na? Uh -huh. I, I like right. it. Right. Yeah, I know you've done a fair bit of study on uh, science and, uh, you know, creation and all of that. Uh, yes. If you have any thoughts on that with regards to our, is science at odds with theology, uh, yeah. you know, feel free to mention. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Some of you know that uh, in the past, uh, as a church, we did have certain uh, doctrinal sort of statements made with regards to medicine and the practice of medicine. And that was very unfortunate. Uh, lots of people have suffered because of that. And uh, we have basically revised all of that. And uh, we do not see any kind of controversy or any conflict between science and uh, being treated medically, right? So there is no problem there. Okay, any other comments or thoughts you'd like to share? <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, I think uh, Surya Murthy mentioned about Dr. Luke. Uh, you know, it is very clearly established in the Gospels that uh, he was a physician. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the very famous uh, prescription the Apostle Paul gives uh, right. Timothy <laughs> for <laughs> common ailments. Uh, and he prescribed uh, a right. letter of... Uh, Alcohol. <laughs> yes. Is that you, Mr. Rao? <laughs> Anil, you said something. I, I, I couldn't catch it. No, no, no. I said uh, the Bible recommends wine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, that, that can cause another controversy, right? <laughs> uh, that can be another whole issue by itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Any mm -hmm. other uh, any other information you might have about the vaccine uh, with regards to who will be given when and by uh, you know is it okay for children? Any any thoughts that you might have? Okay. Okay, then. Thank you for uh, uh, participating today. For those, some of you who may have joined us a little later, we are going to continue with our weekly Bible studies, and it will be done every week. We are hoping this year we might have more of a multi-pronged approach. Uh, we do want to continue with the We Believe series, but we will also take up some standalone issues like what we did today. Uh, there are some social issues which we would like to discuss uh, that has a bearing on our faith, on our lifestyle as a Christian uh, and our belief system. So I think there is a need for us to discuss that. But we want to stay clear of any kind of political or uh, wider religious issues where we don't want to get into something where we might not have an expertise to understand and uh, you know disseminate in terms of knowledge. We want to stick to the Bible, and our perspective will be biblical, uh, not necessarily from any other uh, school of thought. Uh, if you have any suggestions on any particular subject you'd like to be to like us to deal with, I would like you to feel free to let us know, and we can always bring that in. Franklin, you have a thought, sir. Sir, I have one suggestion, sir. 
Yes. If you can please announce your subject, Mr. At least three days in advance, uh, we too can do some preliminary studies, and uh, we'll have a we'll have a better understanding. Okay. Yes. All right. So that that may be a good idea. Uh, that will yes. also keep yes. us on our toes. Yes. <laughs> uh, sir, also one more suggestion, sir. Yes. Sir, you, are we uh, are we not sharing handouts, sir? Since you have done a lot of research, if you can give us a gist you know, of handouts, sir. Um, are you saying that uh, we can uh, share outlines? Outlines, sir. Outlines, na. Okay. Uh, maybe some points, na. So sure. we too can uh, probe into that, and uh, we can give our considered opinion to you. All right. Now, when we are studying the We Believe series, you already have a right write up. Yes. 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 Yeah. But if there are any other which we might, you know, which is of interest, yes. we could provide. Yes, yes. we can think about that. So, so even for the, uh, the uh, even for the series of studies, no, sir. Yes. Please tell us the chapters, sir. The, the just three days in advance, okay. so that we too can come prepared. All right. Uh, what we, we'll uh, do is, yes. whenever we post the notification, yeah, yes. we will along with that give you a note on what we are going to cover. Yes. Yes. All yes. Right? yes. Yeah. All right. So we'll end a little early today, but uh, yes, Anil, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to know everybody doing well health wise uh, in India, the brethren. Anybody we need to pray for? Uh, so far, thankfully, uh, we have not, at least COVID related, there hasn't been any uh, situation. We have our usual uh, aches and pains. Uh, <coughs> I heard, uh, uh, I think. Somebody, a pianist or somebody, Xavier and his wife, they had contracted. Are they okay? Yes, that was a while ago. Yes, they were uh, tested positive, but they have uh, basically been healed. Good. Right. Good. Excellent. Thank you again. And uh, uh, since our elder Franklin is there, may I request you to close in prayer, Franklin? Yes, yes. Gracious Lord, our loving Father in heaven, we so gratefully, Lord, bow our heads. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the rich heritage you have granted us of studying a subject afresh and also taking up, Lord, standalone subjects. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the honesty and the courage to trust in you and to study a subject. Lord, we ask your special guidance and blessings upon us. Lord, and even as we do this, we do want to remember our, our, our friends in the scientific field. Lord, that in their research, they will always have the imperative of being honest in their findings. And Lord, that they will share and they before a decision is taken. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all of us who participated. Be with us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to an understanding of your word. Only, Lord, you can impart understanding. Give us a good understanding and help us, Lord, to grow into a deeper relationship with you day by day. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Be with all of us, be with even those who could not join in. Bluntly, we'll watch our videos, learn and be enriched and grow in grace and in faith. Thank you, Lord. Be with our pastor and be with all of us, Father. We ask your special blessings upon all of us. Especially, Lord, do continue to protect us from the novel virus and also, Lord, from the variation of a, a new virus that is emerging. Lord, we put lives into your hands. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask all this. Amen.